Hi, I'm Brittany, and I'm the creator of these technology lesson plans and activities. Thank you for pressing play on this video so that I can give you a walkthrough of how this technology curriculum works. So let me get myself out of the way so that we can take a look at the site. So you probably came here through the home page, but if you have not yet, go ahead and take a look at that. Students log in all with a class username and password. So you make the account for all of your classes and they all use the same user username and password to access. The login box will be right here, but of course I'm signed in. Uh, I am also integrated with Clever so that you can have the single sign in that works just as it does for all of the other applications that you're using. Okay. The lessons are accessible. If you'd like to check out a couple of free sample lessons, they're under the home drop down menu and you can just click on them from each grade level tab. Students access their lessons through the drop down menus for the grade levels. But kindergarten and first grade have a numbered list. So you instruct your students to click on either kindergarten or first grade. And then all they have to do is find the number. So you let them know which number is that day's lesson and it makes easy access for them. Starting in second grade, students use the hover feature to be able to get to their lesson. So you let them know which unit and which lesson to go to that day and that's how they access. So the lessons, let me pick one for you. Typing Olympics, I love this unit in third grade. We do a month of typing. So most of the lessons have a screencast of instructions from me uh, at the beginning. So if it's like a project that's multiple weeks long, they might not have a video every week because uh, it continues. But if it's a new thing, they have a video of instructions from me, letting them know, know what to do. So they press play. There might be files for students to download or links for them to click on. Everything is right there on the page. Uh, if you are a Google school, anything that you see here that is uh, Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, uh, it will work just fine opened in Docs or Slides or Sheets. I do have specific units on building skills in Docs and Slides and Sheets, uh, but for the downloads, it will uh, automatically open up in the drive and then you can just choose open as docs or sheet or slides. You will notice that I have linked to websites that you've probably been to before and that you're pretty familiar with. One of the major values of this curriculum is that everything is set up for you so that you don't have to worry about that. Um, so we do link to a lot of outside websites. I am aware that Flash is going away so over time, I'm finding replacement activities, but for the meantime, they still work in Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge and Firefox, so that's just an alternative that you can use. So these would be linked activities. And then at the bottom of every page is the standards and the strands and the ICANN statements for you as the teacher so that you can take a look at those. Um, if it does not have, uh, if you finish early activity, students can access the extras menu. So these are all early finisher activities. In third, fourth, and fifth grade, I start every class with 10 minutes of keyboarding. So lots of different options for your students. And then there are what we call sponge activities. So that's uh, quick, easy activities that students can explore with their leftover time at the end of class. For grades K through two, they're linked as pictures in different sections. And then for grades three through five, they're buttons in the sections with the titles so that students work on what they want to. Now, of course, as the teacher, you can let them know, do the reading activities today or the math, whatever it is that you need them to do. And then there are just fun activities for holidays. There is what I call the I'm sorry form. Students can just fill out um, basically what they did wrong if they broke the expectations to hold them accountable. There are some activities for hour of code, technology vocabulary, some open-ended uh, games that'll work on any device, activities for the 100th day of school for your little ones. So just when I say extras, I mean extras, good stuff. 
Uh, there's also a page of sub plans. This would be for an emergency sub that the students can just go right on it and access through all the websites that we all love to use anyway. Um, one thing that's really great about this curriculum is that it's really easy to leave sub plans anyway. Your students, once they learn the procedures of how to access their lessons, all of the instructions are there anyway. So they really don't need a lot of input from a substitute teacher. Their video instructions, whatever uh, links need to be there, it's all there. Okay, I'm gonna make myself big again because I wanna show you what also comes with the curriculum. I decided to print it out, but it is editable rationale and lesson plan pages. So I put mine in a binder to make my life a little bit easier. And I wanna show you, we'll do third grade. So for each grade level and for each unit, there's a little cover page. And then I just, for myself, I put the tabs down the side to make my world a little bit easier, quick access. All right, so here's that Typing Olympics page that I showed you. There's a four-week unit. The rationale pages look like this. And they're basically just information from me to you, tips and tricks that I learned along the way, uh, information to just make your life easier, basically. And then the editable lesson plan page. So at the top, you have the standards and some I can statements. Though, I'd like to point out, there's always like a zillion I can statements. So I just went with like the top ones. Students are learning a lot of skills in all of these tech lessons. Um, and then in the middle is like the materials needed. If you, some of them are longer than others, but it's editable so you can add what you need, reminders and all that. There is a spot with an idea for an exit slip or a proof of learning. So a lot of anecdotal notes, but there are also some assessments. And then a blank one for you to put your reflections. I like to always put like how something went one year so that the next year when I look at my plans again, I can be like, oh yeah, so-and-so's class had a hard time with this or whatever. Um, okay, so then all of the units work that same way and we just go down the tabs. So all of them have rationale page. Some of the rationale pages are super short. And the lesson plan page for everything. There we go, going the wrong way with that video. So there is an option on the site to use just a subscription model and only get access to the website. You do have that option, uh, but I do recommend getting the lesson plans and rationale pages to go with it because it just makes your life a whole lot easier. All right. Let me show you some more lessons so that you can really feel good about this. So they all start with the beginning of the school year, kind of your, your how-tos, your procedures, showing students how to log in. There are gonna be some linked videos if you don't have access to YouTube, for example. You can just skip those activities. And then linked activities for the students to access, again, with the standards at the bottom for the teacher to use. Let me show you an example of some activities that work right on the screen. So I know so far I've showed you a lot of stuff that the students are just linked to and they're like going out, but there are also activities that work right there in the browser. So this one is asking the students to click on the right answers. So for example, this one's self-checking. Let's know the right, then they go to the next one. So they're working on vocabulary but also the ability to use a mouse, use the internet, navigate, all of these amazing skills. So it lets them know that they're right. Just like that, and they work their way through. Then if they finish early, it says they may go to the sponge activities. A bunch of slides of this. So not only are there really great activities that I've found and curated from the internet, but there are also a lot of units that I have custom made for this curriculum. Um, and notice that there are 
units for both Microsoft and the Google Companions. So if you are a Microsoft school, just skip the lessons for Google. If you're a Google school, just skip the Microsoft lessons. They're going to be working on the same skills. I just separated them so that my instructions made more sense because some of the icons look different and some of the um, navigation is a little bit different. So that helps them there. And I'll give you an example here. Like this one just says word processing, but it has all the different versions so that students can get what it is that you are working on. And then I love, so there are some, like I'll give you an example. In fourth grade, they learn about how to um, evaluate a website and there's a website evaluation activity. Well, they are going to do the same lesson again, how to read a web page and evaluate a website activity with a fresh take on it the next year because there are some lessons that are just so incredibly important that they need that reminder the next year. Um, of course, internet safety lessons are also going to happen every single school year. And I wanted to give you a heads up. In fourth grade, I'm using Common Sense Media's digital passport. So that's an example of something where you as the teacher will set up accounts for your students. And all of that's given to you in the rationale pages. I explain that. I just wanted to give you the heads up that that's an example of something that's totally free for the teacher. Um, there's no additional cost for anything. But it is a little bit of prep that you'll have to take care of at a time. Another awesome tool that we use is Padlet, and of course I went to the wrong one. Here we go. So I link to a lot of Padlet so that students can input their final information. It's just a tool that I choose to use because it's really easy for students to upload a screenshot or a file or answer a question. If you are using Google Classroom, feel free to use the same questions that I put in the Padlet or the same prompts and just put it in your Google Classroom so that you're getting your students' information. Or if you are using tablets and you have Seesaw or Seesaw Online, um, you can do that instead. But we do have the option here of these awesome Padlets that will open in a new page and students just add to it. It's a really good opportunity for them to learn about not putting their first and last name too because this is a public thing, right? So I hope that that was a really good walkthrough for you of what it is that is included. Anything on that extras drop down menu or under the home tab, you can check out for free. I also wanted to let you know, for you teachers who love free stuff, that you can come down here to the resource library and I put tons of goodies in here. So you'll just register for your free account. And then there are four different sections down here of files for you to check out. A lot of them are small samples of larger resources that I have, um, but there are also just exclusive freebies for you. And it's great for technology teachers, media specialists, classrooms that are one-to-one -one or close to one-to-one, -to -one, tons of really good resources in there. Hey, if you have any questions, you can always find me on social media. Just search Brittany Washburn on anywhere and you'll find me. Um, or you can email me, info at brittanywashburn.com, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today, and I hope that it was helpful.